Hello everyone and welcome to Organic Chemistry! Now why am I trying to make this so exciting? Well in the past I've realized that a lot of students struggle with organic chemistry and in fact it's a worldwide issue with students and organic chemistry. Have a look at the following. So here's the first one that I found which I found quite funny. So yes, organic chemistry is not the favorite for students, but I know why. Organic chemistry has a lot of terminology that you need to know. It's a lot of memorizing things. And so if you don't put in enough time with it, then of course it's going to be a horrible subject. It looks absolutely terrifying if you look at it from the outside. But if from day one you just start learning how to name the things, it's probably one of my favorite chapters simply because I learned how to master it. And once you master it, you realize there's actually quite a nice structure to it, no pun intended, and you'll see that it, it's actually quite a nice chapter. So let's get started. So what is organic chemistry? The word organic stands for molecules that consist of carbon. It's all about carbon, okay? Carbon is the backbone of organic chemistry. Carbon has this amazing ability, if you remember from grade 10 and 11, if you don't, it's absolutely fine. It has four valence electrons, meaning it's got four electrons on, the, on its outside electron shell, meaning it can form four bonds with surrounding molecules. So for example, it could attach to another carbon over here, it could attach to a hydrogen and a hydrogen, and another carbon and then this carbon could repeat the process and eventually you end up with chains that could go into the thousands of carbons and that is the primary phenomenon that we will keep seeing in organic chemistry. It's these long chains made up of carbons and then it's also going to have other atoms attached to it. Atoms such as hydrogen, that's the most common one, oxygen and then also a lot of the halo alkanes, which is your, your halogens, so things like F or, or fluorine, should I say, chlorine, bromine, things like that. These are the common things that you are going to be seeing together with carbon. And so those molecules that I just showed you, all those atoms, they're going to combine into various kind of combinations. And we in grade 12, we're going to be studying nine different types of combinations. Those combinations are going to be the following. The first one and the most common organic molecule are the alkanes. Now the alkanes consist of carbon and hydrogen only. Next will be the alkenes, which are almost the same as the alkanes, however they have a double bond. So notice we can see two lines over there. Next will be the alkynes. Now the al alkynes also consist of carbon and hydrogen only, but what they have is a triple bond. Okay, notice the alkanes had single bonds, whereas the alkenes have a double bond, and then the alkynes have a triple bond. Next is the halo alkanes. Now the name tells us everything. The halo part stands for halogen, so it's the things in group 7 on your periodic table, such as chlorine, fluorine, bromine, iodine. Then you've got the alkanes, which is these guys. Notice, single bonds only, so here we've only got single bonds everywhere, plus we have a halogen, so we call them halo alkanes. Very original. Next, we're moving on to the alcohols. Now what makes alcohols unique is that they've got this OH bond. Okay, you see that they've got an OH together. That is what makes something an alcohol. The rest of the molecule just looks just like an alkane, but it's got that OH, and so that's an alcohol. In the word alcohol, we also have an OH next to each other. Next will be the aldehydes. I must say, it's making me very upset knowing that I'm not going to fit all nine into this one screen. But anyways, here we have the aldehydes. What makes aldehydes unique is that they've got a carbon, or the carbon at the end, has an ox a double bond oxygen attached to a hydrogen. We'll get more into all the details of each molecule in later videos, but aldehydes have a double bond oxygen and a hydrogen on the side. So aldehydes on the side. If you can just remember that little rhyme for now, we all good. Next will be the ketones. What makes ketones unique is that they've got a carbon attached to a, a double bond oxygen, just like we saw with the aldehydes, but what makes these ones different is if you look to the left and if you look to the right, there are carbons 
Whereas with the aldehyde, if you look to the one side, there's a hydrogen, and if you look to the other side, there's a carbon. But we, as I said, we're going to get more into the details of each type later on. But for now, we're introducing ketones. Next, the carboxylic acids. What makes carboxylic acids unique is that they've got a carbon with a double bond oxygen, just like we saw with these ones and these ones. However, on that same carbon, they also have an OH, which is what we had with alcohol. You see, so the types of bonds we're getting are very common, and so you'll quickly see the patterns that are evolving. Ha! And if I zoom out, I can fit in number nine, which is going to be the esters. And what makes them unique they are the only ones that have a random oxygen atom in between two carbons. If you look at all the others, it's just carbons the whole time. Sometimes we get an oxygen, but it's at the end, or it's a double bond, or it's at the end like with this one. But with esters, the oxygen is actually in between two carbons like that. But as we said, you're going to get more comfortable with these, but these are the nine different types that you have to know. In the next videos, we are going to go and examine each of the different types more with more detail. And so very soon you'll start to become more comfortable with them. But I hope by now you're already feeling comfortable with them. Because there they are. Those are the nine. Those are the ones you're going to have to know. And over the next couple of lessons, we will familiarize ourselves even more. Thank you for watching, guys.